I don't even know where to start this thing. So this is not exactly how I wanted to start the month of July, but uh, life happens. And so this is going to be a little bit different video for you guys. It's not about plant propagation. In fact, I may have trouble with plant propagation here for the summer. <laughs> So we'll talk about all that. We'll get to all the details. Originally, I wasn't going to say anything about this, but I don't think that there's any way to not say anything about this. Since I try to post several times a week for you guys through the spring and summer, because I got so many projects going on. Well, I'm in the middle of projects. I'm knee deep in the middle of projects, and I've been filming different little projects for you guys. And life took a quick little turn trying to keep my spirits up, trying to keep happy, trying to make the most of it, but uh, things aren't going to be quite the same around here for the summer. So here's the story. Today is Sunday. I was off of work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, I decided the county dumps open, I'm going to make a dump run. I'll load my truck up and I'm going to haul a bunch of stuff off to the dump. Well. I got the thing completely loaded and there was an old bike that just it doesn't work very well it's old rusty we just need to get rid of it so I threw it on top of the whole pile and I thought I need to tie this thing down and so I threw a strap over it I pulled the strap tight but when I pulled on the strap it wasn't as tight as if I had really gotten up there and tried to pull that sucker you know it was harder to get it tight from standing on the ground so I climbed up on the truck and what was in the truck were, were probably, I don't know, 20 bags, trash bags full of insulation, insulation from a pole barn, an old pole barn that we tore down and rebuilt. And I need to get this stuff off to the dump. But those bags of insulation were kind of loose and wasn't a real good footing, I guess I should say. And so I climbed on top of the truck. I'm in pretty decent shape. I'm only 40. I've got a good handle on my footing. And you know, I generally don't make mistakes when it comes to walking. <laughs> but in this case, I'm standing on the pile of junk. I'm pulling on that tie down as hard as I can. And I just about got it done and tight as I wanted it to get. I went to reach down and grab that tie down and just feel how tight it was on everything and my right foot started sinking into the bags of insulation just because they were big soft bags and normally you know like I said I'm, I'm healthy I'm in shape I just catch my footing and regain where I was but in this case I kept sinking and I completely lost my footing I fell over backwards and when I fell over backwards, I reached behind me with my right hand to catch myself on the tailgate. And what I forgot was that I had slid a broken window alongside the back of the tailgate. And it was sticking about a foot up above the tailgate with the glass busted out in it. I'll take a picture, a shot of that now for you to see exactly what went down. Anyway... I reached behind me with my right hand and that's what I caught myself on. My hand went right through the broken hole in the window and fell right on the glass and it dawned on me as fast as it happened that there was a broken window I was reaching for. And here we are. So, I'm a little out of commission right now guys. <laughs> it's the best months of summer. It's propagation time, man. It, it, we're here right now. And I can't use my good hand. It's done. I sliced up a whole bunch of fingers. I sliced right through my little finger. I cut the tendon and everything right down to the bone. And I can't even use the finger. It won't even bend. In fact, I think I cut through all the nerves because I can't even feel the darn thing. So, if you want to hear the rest of the story, I'll continue. Because it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of gory, but it's kind of funny too. <laughs> so, I'm sitting there in the back of the truck, 
holding on to glass. It dawns on me that I'm holding on to the glass. Oh, shoot. I look back. There's blood everywhere. Dang it. Pull my hand up. Blood just running down my hand. I grab it and put pressure on it. I look at it real quick. This is going to be bad, man. This is not good. I squeeze it hard. Yell for Shelly. I need help. She comes running out. What do you need? What do you need? I just run past her, run into the house, stick my hand under the sink in the water, and there hanging on the end of my hand is my pinky. <laughs> so I essentially don't have a pinky. I mean, it's, it's, it's still attached, but I cut it about in half right down to the bone. And like I said, I cut the tendons and everything. So it's just there. <laughs> and as soon as I saw it, I got my elbows on the edge of the sink. And I'm sitting there with my pinky in the water. And as soon as I saw it, and I saw that thing just flopped over and that bone exposed. Now, I've told you guys in previous videos somewhere, I'm a registered nurse by profession. That's what I do for a living. And I take care of the nastiest wounds, man. I take care of people with just the funkiest things going on, the deepest wounds right in their belly and everywhere else. And none of that stuff bothers me. But when it's happening to you, it's just a little bit different. And let me tell you what, I'm leaning over that sink and I started getting lightheaded and I said, Shelly, I'm going to pass out, man. And she goes, you need to sit down, Mike. And I turned around, I sat back against the kitchen cupboard and I just sank down onto the floor and I sat there for a minute and she was panicked and she said, what do you want me to do? And I'm sitting there holding pressure on this thing. She said, you want me to call 911? I said, no. I said, we got to go to the ER, but you can drive me. I don't need an ambulance. And then that was it. That's all I remember. <laughs> Guys, I blacked out, man. I just passed out. I, I was out cold. And I just, that was it. That was the last thing I remember. Saying, no, you can drive me. Anyway, some time went by. I don't even know how long, a minute or something. And I'm just sitting there. And all I remember... Actually, I didn't remember anything. All I remember is my eyes slowly start to come open a little bit. And I've got them like partway open. And everything's real hazy. And I'm just super confused. I'm thinking in my head, what the heck is going on? I'm hazy. I can't think clearly. I'm confused. And I'm sitting on my kitchen floor. Shelly's running around the kitchen in circles with the phone to her ear talking to somebody. My kid's sitting next to me rubbing my shoulder. And I'm sitting there going, what's going on? Why am I sitting here against my kitchen cabinet? Why is my wife running around the kitchen? Why are my kids sitting next to me? And I had no idea what happened. I had no idea what was going on. And all of a sudden, it slowly, it's like I couldn't move. I couldn't, it was like my brain was in there thinking a little bit, but not real well. And I, I really didn't know what was going on. And it slowly came back to me. Oh yeah, I cut my finger. Oh man, what's going on? And then I look at Shelly. Shelly, who are you talking to? I'm on the phone with 911. Ah, shoot. So she called 911. Well, it turns out, after I sat down on the floor and told her not to call, my eyes rolled back in my head. She said my head flopped over sideways and I just went completely lifeless and she freaked out. Held on to me so I didn't fall. Got the kid to call 911. Kid called 911, handed her the phone, and uh, then that the that was it. And then after however long, I finally started waking up. But holy cow, man! I completely just. I mean, I'm telling you, when it happens to you, it's completely different than when you're doing it to somebody else. In my profession, it's better to give than receive. <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't long before two paramedics walk into my front door. And I'm still sitting there on the floor, and I was sweating profusely. Like, I still didn't know what the heck was happening to me, man. I was drenched. I was just sweat pouring off my face, sweat pouring down my arms. I mean, just pouring. And um, the adrenaline was pumping, or I don't know what was going on, but I was not right. And I'm just sitting there holding that towel on my hand, just squeezing. Paramedics walk in the door and I just happen to know them. They're two guys that are dads of kids that go to school with my kids. And so it was kind of cool that I knew them and they were real cool about it. Uh, it was pretty awkward, you know, and in my head I'm thinking, what a wussy, Mike. You cut your pinky and you got the paramedics at your house. 
Well, it was a little worse than just cutting your pinky because I completely severed the thing all the way through the tendon down to the bone, severed some other fingers there, and uh, and I blacked out and was sweating profusely. My wife didn't know what to do, so it was kind of an awkward situation, but in my head I was thinking, what a wussy, Mike, you just cut your pinky. Anyway, they were pretty cool about it. Um, helped wrap everything up real good. After I finally came around enough, they said, do you want to take the ambulance or do you want your wife to drive you? I said, if I take the ambulance, will I get in any quicker? They said, no. I said, oh, my wife can drive me. So Shelly drives me to the ER. We get into the emergency room. And of course, I work there. So people knew me and, you know, they helped me get in there quicker. Probably also with the fact that I was bleeding like a sieve and cut my fingers wide open. But, uh... They get me into the back, the doc walks in, or the nurse walks in, gets things looked at, then the doctor walks in. She says, we gotta numb things up. Start sticking some uh, lidocaine in my finger. Oh man, guys, talk about pain. I mean, this thing hurt so, this is the worst pain I've had since I broke my collarbone when I was a kid. This, I mean, this was some intense pain when she stuck that needle in that wound, man. I just sat there, grinned and bear it, and She's sticking that in there. My wife, though, in the meantime, I'm, I'm sitting there holding that thing. You know, my wife's sitting there. She can't hardly stand seeing me like that. She gets up, does a couple circles, starts to walk out the door as fast as she can. And all of a sudden, while she's walking out the door, she hits the light switch. <laughs> We're in the middle of the ER. There's no windows. It's pitch black in the room. I'm sitting there, gritting my teeth. The doc's got a needle in my finger. And she goes, well... That's not helpful. <laughs> Very calmly. It was actually kind of funny. I was so out of my mind in pain and just dealing with that. I didn't even realize that the lights going off wasn't a part of the show. And so I'm just going with it. Just thinking, oh, keep going, Doc. And the Doc's probably going, well, I can't really see too well right now. Shelly's over in the corner panicking. Where's the light button? Where's the light button? She finally finds it, flips the switch back on, and the Doc says, well, that's a good thing. Now we can keep working. <laughs> I still don't even realize anything just happened. Anyway, they finally get the, the lidocaine in. And after 15 seconds or so, that finger is so numbed up, I can't, I can't feel nothing. Oh, jeez. Talk about relief, guys. That sucker finally got numbed up. And that was about as relieved as I've been in a long time. And she starts pushing on it and looking at it. And I'm in my head. I'm going, oh, God, please don't. But... It was actually numb. I couldn't feel a thing, but my brain was telling me I didn't want nobody to touch it because it, it was pretty nasty. It was pretty bad. And she starts poking, prodding, and touching it. And she goes, all right. She goes, now I want you to take your pinky and I want you to bend your pinky up towards your hand. And guys, I'm looking at this thing and for the life of me, I'm staring at it and my brain is telling it, move, pinky. And I'm trying, and I'm trying, and it won't move. This is before I realized I severed the tendon that bends your pinky inward. And I'm staring at that thing, and I'm, I'm, come on, pinky. And with everything in me, I know you can do it. You've been doing it for 40 years, man. There goes that rooster. You've been doing this for 40 years. You can do it. And somewhere deep down inside of me, I can hear it. Use the force, Mike. And I'm trying as hard as I can to use the force and make that pinky move. And that pinky wouldn't move. And I couldn't figure out if it was my mind playing tricks on me. Because my brain's telling my pinky to move and my pinky won't move. And I'm thinking, is it because I'm scared to move it? Or is it because it really won't move? I couldn't figure it out. But the doctor looks at me and says, you cut the tendon. That's why you can't move your pinky. You're going to have to have surgery. Oh, man talk about oh man it just it all started flood i i just overwhelmed completely overwhelmed i started tearing up i hit the bed yelled a word i probably shouldn't have yelled i was madder than heck and it was just like it all started flooding into my head what am i going to do about work what am i going to do about home what about my family what i can't be out i'm right-handed like i can't have surgery i don't have time for this i'm telling you guys Life takes a turn in an instant. And you know what? A lot of you know that a lot more harsher than I do. This is a pinky. It's completely debilitated my right hand for right now, but it's just a pinky. <laughs> so it sure can take a turn real quick.
So I know this is a long story, but uh, in the end, it's Sunday. I came home. I've got to sit through the weekend. The tendon's still completely detached. Uh, it was super painful that first night. I didn't take any pain meds. I don't like taking pain meds. I'm not, uh, anyway, I'm dealing with that, but it's been, be yesterday was better. Today's okay. I'm just, it's playing head games on me knowing that it's not fixed. It's not right. It's screwed up and I got to go through the weekend, but come tomorrow morning, I'm supposed to call the doctor or they're supposed to call me the, the orthopedic surgeon's office and I got to go have surgery. I don't know if that's going to happen tomorrow or if that's going to happen on Tuesday. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the future holds, but here we are. I thought I got to share this with you guys because I, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to post. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be out of work for a while. I Somewhere in my mind, I'm still praying that I'm going to walk into that orthopedic surgeon's office. He's going to take one look at my finger and say, Mike, your finger's just fine, buddy. And uh, you don't have to have surgery. Your tendon's working fine. It's all sewn up and it just needs to heal. There's no problem at all. Somewhere in my mind, I'm hoping he'll say that. And within a couple weeks, it'll be healed up and I'll be right back at it. But the logical side of me says, Mike, your finger's screwed up, dude. And you got to have surgery. So anyway, I researched it. It sounds like if it is what the doctor's saying and I am going to have to have surgery, it's going to be six to eight weeks in a splint with my hand at a 90 degree angle and the splint's going to completely come up and surround my fingers i'm not going to be allowed to use my hand at all for six to eight weeks uh and then it says 10 to 12 weeks before you're allowed to grab anything or lift anything or do anything and so you know it's like everything in life has come to a hold i mean you think about it guys Think of, put yourself in my shoes. I'm right-handed. I'm right-handed. I, I, I still don't completely comprehend the impact that this is having on me. I'm learning as I go. As I got home and then the next morning, everything that you do in life and start realizing, you don't realize what you do until you this happens. I mean... Do you realize how hard it is to brush your teeth with your left hand when you're right-handed? Try it sometime. Uh, opening a bottle of water. Opening a bottle of pills, your antibiotics. Opening a door. Wiping your butt. I mean, I'm telling you guys, it's insane the things in your life you take for granted until you can't do them. And so I'm just trying to take this in stride and keep a real good attitude about this. Now, I was supposed to work all weekend. I called my manager from the ER. She was super cool. She came down to the ER room, uh, saw me and helped me through it. I'm gonna have to be on FMLA for a while. I don't know, I don't know anything yet. I gotta go to the surgeon tomorrow and find out what we're gonna do and what the plan is. But I may be out of work for a long time. I may be blowing through my sick time and vacation time and everything right now but the pro which sounds sounds wonderful right you know all this time to propagate plants and and work on my nursery and get projects done but the problem is i can't do anything i can't do anything and so here i am all broken hearted and uh i'm i'm trying to sorry about the noise the neighbor keep uh, he's grinding something over there anyway i I'm trying to do as much as I can. My wife's trying to do everything for me and my kids are trying to do everything for me. And I'm like, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you're doing, but you got to let me do what I can do for myself. And you got to let me do what you would normally do that I can do so that you can do things I can't do. And we're trying to figure out that whole dynamic and my wife's work. And so like, you know, just making eggs in the morning for breakfast. So, you know, our kids, we try to stay away from cereals and things like that. I make eggs and oatmeal for my kids almost every morning for breakfast. And I'm having a hard time flipping eggs right now. So we're gonna have to go to the store and get some cereal and, you know, just things that, you know, I, I don't know, you can understand. It's, it's, it sounds like a little thing. It, I, in my head, I keep going, it's just a pinky, Mike. It's just a pinky but I can't use this hand. I cannot use this hand. Every time I try to bend these other fingers, it, my brain makes it, this finger want to move too. Try it. Try to just bend these fingers without using your pinky. Even though you can do that, it still makes your pinky want to move. And it hurts like you wouldn't believe. I can't use the hand. And so I almost feel lame here. I almost feel crippled, <laughs> but 
I got a good attitude about it. I'm going to keep moving forward. We're going to make this work. I'm just really, 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 really looking forward to getting in there tomorrow, talking to the surgeon, figuring out what the game plan is, getting this thing fixed, getting on the other end of this, because he's going to have to go. They stitched it all up. He's going to have to go in there, reopen everything back up, and start all over again. And So I'm looking forward to getting a couple days past all that so that I can start start the healing process and start moving forward and get done with this, man, so I can get on with life. If it ain't a chicken, it's the guy grinding. So anyway, more updates to come. I'm going to try the best I can to finish out these projects that I got going on. My kids are going to help me with it. My wife's going to help me with it, with the filming and all that kind of stuff. And we're just going to work together and get it to you guys because I got some cool stuff going on right now, man. But if things lag behind, oh, by the way, typing, I'm having a real hard time typing. So if you guys are noticing that some of my replies to your questions are a little short right now, it's because I'm doing this and it's not easy. <laughs> so anyway... I, I'm trying. I'm trying real hard, but it's going to take some time. Bear with me. Uh, you know, we might as well just keep doing updates of this because I know you guys are going to want to know how things are going. But, uh, hey, follow along and you'll see what happens. Have an awesome week, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios. <laughs>